you should probably expect spoilers. This episode marks the first anniversary of Who Dat. A year ago I kicked things off by reviewing one of my favourite Street Fighter characters and today for the show's first birthday, I'm going to be talking about another. She's a skillful little ninja straight out of the sticks and the only thing on her mind are boys, boys, boys. Who Dat? It's Ibuki. Ninjas are one of those character types that won't be going anywhere anytime soon. Even after the ninja craze that swept the 80s and 90s had calmed down, these sneaky gits continue to pop up in our favourite games. There's a lot of them out there right now. Then at some point during 1997, this new Street Fighter game rolled in and said, Oi, look at me, so I did and found a ninja was in there too. Well, hey! Her name was Ibuki, and I was instantly drawn to a somewhat intriguing take on the traditional ninja design. But who was she and what was she about? What was her telephone number? Did she have a man? Can I kick it? Yes you can. Ibuki hails from a hidden village inhabited entirely by ninjas. No, not that one. The village's origins date back as far as the ancient Japanese Warring States period, and although it now remains hidden from society, it has continued to raise and train ninjas to this very day. There, Ibuki, a senior high school girl, has trained in the ways of the ninja since her kindergarten days, and she is now growing into a proficient and skillful young lady. She can usually be seen accompanied by Don-chan, her pet tanuki, which is basically a raccoon dog. Yo! No, not that one. During the Street Fighter 3 Second Impact story arc, her clan sends her out to obtain a set of documents called the G-File from the Illuminati organisation. These documents contain information on the Illuminati's global restructuring plan, highlighting everything from what they have managed to achieve so far in the world's history, and what their objectives are going ahead towards the future. Ibuki confronts Gil, the Illuminati leader, and he openly hands over the G-File to her, stating that their plans are already in motion anyway, and cannot be stopped. Ibuki returns to her village with these world-changing documents and... Uh, well, we're actually unsure as to what happens afterwards since the G-File is not referenced again beyond this point, so who knows? A year later during the Third Strike story arc, Ibuki's taking her high school graduation exam which requires her to locate a martial arts master and beat them in combat within 5 minutes. As you do. She locates the hermit, Oro, and chooses him as her examination grade ticket because holy shit is she terrible at making decisions. Oro just happens to be one of the most powerful martial arts masters around, so powerful in fact that he goes as far as binding one of his own arms down to make bouts of combat fair for his opponents, and Ibuki chose to fight him for her graduation exam. Idiot. Anyways, it seems she somehow managed to graduate, more than likely due to Oro probably giving her an easy win or something, and our beloved Ibuki is off to university. That's the furthest Ibuki story arc goes in terms of timeline canon, though she did make an appearance in the Street Fighter 4 arc, and since Street Fighter 4 takes place before Street Fighter 3, this means that the events surrounding Ibuki in 4 are technically a prequel to everything I've just mentioned. So, what happens with Ibuki during Street Fighter 4 then? Anything in depth or exciting? Maybe it's a top priority mission assigned to her by her village to infiltrate the SIN organisation and install some personality into its leader Seth, huh? Eh? Yeah, something like that? No. No, uh, Ibuki just skips a day off her ninja training to go hunt for some cute boys. Look out all you handsome guys, here I come! What? Yep, that's it. She plays truant and goes to find hot guys to bump and grind with. What? She comes across all sorts of boys on her trip. Emo boys. Beastie boys. Even bad boys. Wait, bad boys? You talking about bad boy? Hey, yo, I know exactly what you're- I get you fam, I get you. Let me just uh, go and get some of you. I 
Coming up Ibuki's thrilling Street Fighter 4 arc, she gets back late from her escapades and her class is already in session. Her homegirl Sarai didn't cover for her skiving ass, so Ibuki gets caught trying to sneak back in and wah wah wah, that's our Ibuki fam. <laughs> As far as backstory goes, Ibuki's arcs range from chapters detailing the utmost important plot points right down to the cheesiest levels of filler episode material. It's a mixed bag to say the least, but it is what it is. While I might find her story in Street Fighter 4 to be so random and honestly quite lame, it's pretty harmless overall and avoids causing any problems to her own continuity. As strange as it is for me to say that considering this is the Street Fighter series we're talking about and continuity gets butchered every other week. Anyways, let's press on. Visual design. On first glance, you're told everything you need to know about Ibuki. She's a ninja because she obviously very clearly looks like one, and while her appearance is rooted in traditional ninja-esque design, there's one or two things here that help modernise the look. The colour of the outfit is an ashy beige, highlighting the fact that she's a ninja from a more rural area and her garments need to stealthily blend in with her surroundings of trees and mountains. The ways in which the outfit is worn though is a little more informal and modern, taking into account the fact her attire has the sleeves ripped, which is something this series likes to display a lot of for some strange reason. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe Capcom wanted to start a radical trend or something. Go into your wardrobes right now and rip the sleeves off everything you own. Just absolutely fuck up your life fam. Another thing that somewhat modernises the appearance of Ibuki is the subtle hints of sex appeal in the design. And I say subtle because not all characters need to be butt naked to show they are sexy. Sometimes a little individuality in a rather basic design goes for more with its mileage. Ibuki wears her outfit loosely, more than likely because she's trying to express herself a little. The openings to her baggy trousers show a little bit of skin without needing to resort to panty shots or going too far. It fits the character's style and personality quite well. Her hair is easily one of my favourite features on her. Hanging down behind her in two or sometimes three long ponytails, when Ibuki is stationary it sits in place and gives a high point of focus to her head and shoulders. I also think it gives Ibuki a somewhat bird-like quality to her, especially when she's doing her ninja thing and perching up high on something. This image precisely captures what I mean. The hair hangs down behind her like the tails of some form of exotic bird as it waits to leap from where it sits, much like Ibuki herself. During movement, her hair transforms from this sharp and angular appearance to beautifully flowing streams that trail after her, almost akin to that of the ribbons used by dancing acrobats. It really emphasises the motions of the character as she hops and jumps all over the place. It looked great in Street Fighter 3 and I personally think they looked even better in Street Fighter 4, but seriously, it's making me nervous thinking about how they're going to handle her hair in Street Fighter 5, man. Have you even seen this shit so far? Between all the bananas and fryers, I'm worried Ibuki's hair is going to come out looking like licorice or something. Earlier on, I mentioned that Ibuki's visual design intrigued me when I first glimpsed sight of her in a Sega gaming magazine, and this is what I meant by it. It's the mask. For most of you, it probably just comes across as an average ninja mask, a piece of material that wraps over the lower half of the face and connects down the neck to an undergarment on the user's torso. Standard stuff, no doubt. But never before had I seen a ninja who actively wore it like this, so loosely and sometimes even hanging off of her face altogether. She's even wearing it without a hood. Ibuki just wears a bandana. There's no connecting hood involved at all anywhere on her. This design aspect resonated with me because when me and my friends used to play as kids, and whenever I wanted to pretend to be a ninja, I would wear a top with a turtleneck collar. I would then pull the collar up over my face and boom, instant ninja. I knew ninjas didn't actually wear turtleneck tops, unless they were some trendy motherfucking ninjas. But for me, as a kid wearing a turtleneck, it was the easiest way to recreate the mask look and I used to do it all the damn time. And here was Ibuki, wearing her mask in the exact same way that I used to wear a turtleneck sweater whenever I pretended to be a ninja. I'm not sure if it was intentional for her design to give off this vibe, but for kids like myself who did this sort of thing, it instantly made Ibuki one of the most relatable ninja characters we had seen so far, and from that it gave her a more modern feel because of it. It's hard to fault Ibuki's visual design when it does so many nice things, whether intentional or not. I don't think I would change anything, though if I had to be incredibly nitpicky, I'd tell you that beige isn't exactly the most flattering of colours, and if they wanted to give a colour scheme to Ibuki that still referenced her stealthy ninja-esque nature, then a dark shade of green might have been more fitting. There's actually an alternative colour for her that pretty much nails it in this regard. But honestly, I'm just bugging. She's fine the way she is. Beige or not, Ibuki looks great, and I love her design. Personality. 
The thing with ninjas is they tend to come with a stereotypical ninja trope of being silent, composed and brooding, and although Ibuki does do all those things, it's only when she has to do it for her job as a ninja, she is not like this 24-7. When she's not out training or on the job, she's a loud, talkative and bubbly-natured young lady. That's what makes Ibuki stand out from other ninjas. She's a ninja because it's one of her responsibilities, not because it's her entire way of life. There is more to her than the mask. She is in tune with her modern side, instantly changing into regular clothes that are more expressive of her personality the very second she gets the chance to. As I said earlier, even while wearing her ninja outfit, she still attempts to push the boundaries of how much individuality she can spin on it. She wants to look attractive because she's a young girl feeling the spice of life, but hates the clothes she's being made to wear, so we see Ibuki wearing her ninja outfit loosely and somewhat outlandishly in an effort to not seem too restricted by the job. It's interesting, she's a character who's all about expression, but is from a character archetype where expression is meant to be kept to a minimum. Another interesting thing we see with Ibuki is her attitude maturing over the course of the series. While I admit that her storyline in Street Fighter 4 is cringy, it actually works well for her character growth. She's a young girl doing boring ninja training exercises, she wants to get out and find cute guys, and she doesn't want to waste her youth being a ninja. I can oddly understand where she's coming from. Then, by order of the timeline in Street Fighter 3, she has grown up a little and takes her role as a ninja a little more seriously. It's a complete arc. It shows progression in her attitude, beginning with her disliking her ninja lifestyle, learning to accept her responsibilities, and then pushing forward to better herself so that she can reap some rewards from all the hard work she's put into it. In the end, I really like how Ibuki sees that there's more to life than being a ninja, while eventually learning to also respect the fact that it is one of her main responsibilities. Importance. So, as we've gathered, Ibuki's inclusion in the series has been a mixed bag, and while it might piece together a good arc for her personality and character growth, the fact of the matter is, Ibuki doesn't cross paths with too many important characters for that many crucial reasons. Literally her one biggest most plot driven moment was when she confronts Gil himself to take the G file from him. This heavily documented file that held all the plans of the Illuminati's future was obtained by Ibuki and brought back to her village where nothing happened. The following year she went out to fight Oro so she could pass her graduation exam and that was it. The G file wasn't referenced again within her story. What did her ninja clan just use the document for roll ups? Was Don Chan getting mad blazed off of it? What the fuck happened to the file, man? This plotline directly put Ibuki on Gil's path. To Gil, she was an opposing enemy. Not many other characters in the Street Fighter 3 series had their sights set on Gil the same way that Ibuki did, and it's a damn shame that it was never really followed up on. Because of that, it kinda left Ibuki sort of lumbering around other plotlines. In her earlier events within Street Fighter 4, she had no major characters to cross paths with. The only character she meets there is Sakura. Ibuki asks Sakura if they can have a fight and if Ibuki wins, she wanted Sakura to introduce her to some cool guys. Even Sakura says that's a bloody odd request, but also that she might know someone suitable. And that's that, they fight, fuck knows who won, fuck knows which guy Sakura was talking about. Was it Dan? Was it Ryu? Was it Ken? Did Sakura introduce her to whoever it was? No? Not an important plotline? Okay, fuck it, we're done. There is a brief encounter with Elena during Second Impact where they meet and have a friendly match, so they establish the connection too, but aside from that, nothing major happened there either. Her and Makoto have a unique intro animation before they fight, but why this happens has never been explained, leaving people to just speculate that they're friendly rivals of some sort. It sadly feels like Ibuki is probably one of the most underutilized characters within Street Fighter's growing storyline. She has so much potential to be more involved, and it hasn't happened. Yet. There's still hope as far as I'm concerned, but let's wait and see on that before I go calling anything again, eh? Conclusion. We've got a delightful little ninja girl who doesn't actually want to spend all her time being a ninja and dreams of a life outside of the mask. She's a modern girl too, making her relatable to the youth who don't want to sit around all day doing homework, they want to get out there and make friends. Despite that though, she respects what she has been taught, and when it's time to suit up, she puts that mask on and gets on with her job. She looks great, she moves great, and she's an overall great character to have in this series. Without a single ounce of hesitation, Ibuki gets my Valhar emblem because obviously she's one of my favourite characters, but things with her are not entirely perfect. I would handle her inclusion in the universe a little bit differently than how it's been done, but I'm hopeful for the future and I cannot wait to see more of this girl.
Yo, yeah, welcome everyone. I just want to send a massive thank you to all of you that have stuck with Huda for an entire year. It's been an awesome journey so far and you've all been a brilliant audience. Thank you so much for subscribing and spreading the word and just keeping things moving for me. You guys are absolutely wicked. Thank you so much. Cheers, everybody.